first question comes from Rebecca Harla. Coach, the Clippers can pressure a defense with the best of them, obviously, but from your perspective, what makes it so difficult to pick these guys up from three? Yeah, they, they put a lot of pressure on you. Uh, their ability to crack you off the dribble and then post you up and also catch and shoot, multiple pick and roll players. Uh, if you're not reading the ball correctly, um, you're going to be late getting out. And uh, we were. And so I put enormous pressure on us. Uh, but they also, to their credit, and there's a reason why they have that record, they play very hard and they play very unselfishly. And so, uh, you know, I thought we did some good things offensively. Uh, didn't like the way we started the second half. And then there was a, a sequence of uh, loose balls and long rebounds that we didn't, didn't get to uh, that led to three-point shots for them. And so uh, we got to find a way to come up with those. And, uh, you know, if we do, then we'll be more successful. But I thought offensively it was good. Defensively, it's not what we would have liked. Brian Mahoney, AP. Hey, Tom, you, you, got, you got shot the ball very well early. Uh, did it kind of lure you into a, maybe a pace of a game you didn't want to play with a team like that? Well, I, th I think, you know, the thing is you have to play 48 minutes against them. And I thought we played overall very well in the first half. Uh, but the start of the third quarter, uh, we started slowly and it gave them a cushion. And then we played from behind. And that made it different for us. Uh, we knew they would come out aggressive to start, and we have to match that intensity. And so when we do, we're very good defensively. And uh, I thought when we shared the ball, I thought we made a number of good reads when the ball hit the paint. And uh, 115 points uh, should be good enough to get a win. And uh, this team, you know, as I mentioned there, they're great at putting pressure on you, getting into the paint and then spraying it out. And then you have to close. And if your closeouts are short, uh, you know, they can shoot the ball. And a lot of shooting on the roster. Your body and your post. Um, you guys are, are down double digits in the fourth quarter. Um, you cut it to two. Um, is that the kind of is that the kind of game where if you have a crowd in the building, like you know, the, the crowd would just be going nuts and it would be such an advantage for you guys? Yeah, I think it's league wide, you know, and that's one of the things that's uh, probably a little different, and it, it probably benefits you more when you're on the road. Uh, but it's it's our reality, and so um, you know you got to make the best of the circumstances that you do have, uh, but home court you know the fans are a big part of it and so uh, right now they're not here so we have to count on each other for energy and uh, if we make hustle plays um, make effort plays make unselfish plays those are the type of things that unite and inspire a team and so that you can see it uh, and every team does it if uh, those type of plays can get you going and that's uh, that's what you have to do to win yeah, yeah. Ian Bigley, SMI. Yeah, Tom, I think it was a little over eight minutes to go. Uh, I think you guys were down five and the Clippers called timeout and they got Kawhi in. Did you consider then doing a counter substitution? Um, and I guess it was a couple minutes later where you actually subbed guys in. What was your thought there? Well, I like the way that group was playing to start the fourth quarter. And so we probably we're, we're trying to ride it a little bit. And I thought they put us in pretty good position. And, uh, you know, and I, as I mentioned, I, I like the way our bench plays. I think they have good cohesion. Um, so that's what we did. Chris Beck, NBC. Hey, Tom, you made several runs to, to get back in it in the second half, but you just couldn't get over the hump. How much energy does it take to continue to play catch up in that situation? Uh, you know, that's, you have to do what's necessary to, to win. And so we'd like to be consistent with our effort for 48 minutes. Uh, but there's a lot of fight in the team. Uh, 
And it, as I said, in every game, there's things that you do well and things that you don't do as well as you would like. Uh, we have to take a hard look at the film, make our corrections, and then there's a quick turnaround uh, for tomorrow's game. So we have to be right and ready for that game as well. Steve Popper, Newstick. Hey, Tom, I think midway through the fourth, there was a sequence where you called two timeouts in, I think, 17 seconds. Was that something you saw you didn't like or, or just trying to keep it from getting away? Or Yeah, well, I think you, when you are when you get to that point in the game, if you, you, you're also trying to kill runs. And I know, like, with that with their team, they can, they can put 10 points on you in a hurry. So you have to make corrections, you know, when you feel you need to. And sometimes just getting, you know, the stoppage in play and then getting organized can help. Last question, Mark Berman, New York Post. Hey, Tom, uh, you talked about getting ready for tomorrow's game. Is, is there still some special feeling going back to Chicago, even though there's no fans there to cheer you? <laughs> I, well, you know, obviously I spent a lot of time there and I certainly enjoyed it, but that could be said for a lot of teams, unfortunately. So, um, but it's a great city, great, you know, great organization, great tradition. And so it's fortunate just to be part of this league, but uh, I enjoyed my time in Chicago for sure. First question comes from Rebecca Harlow. Emmanuel, is you continue to take on some of the best teams in the league. What are you learning about what it takes to defend at the highest level and then in addition to that you know what makes it so difficult to defend this Clippers team from three um it takes a lot um it takes game plan game plan discipline it takes a little bit of luck um it takes effort it takes really everything to go your way um and sometimes it doesn't I feel like you know coming in as a rookie I haven't seen everything but what I've seen tonight was they were making a lot of tough shots um that's a credit to them. They we we tried as I feel like we tried as best we could. Well, our energy and effort I feel like was there. Um, they just made some really good plays. So credit to them. Steve Popper, Newsday. Hey Manuel, I think you've talked before about Lou being a, a guy that you modeled your game after. It looked like you got a chance to talk to him a little today. Could you just talk about that? Yeah, I just told him he was one of my favorite players. Um, his game, as far as just how smooth he is, his offensive ability. Uh, being able to get to a spot, his floater, um, draw fouls. I, I've watched a lot of synergy and YouTube highlights of him. So uh, I was trying not to foul him tonight because I knew he was just going to try to do that sweep through when he was getting in the lane. So I tried as best I could. But, um, you know, hopefully just being being a rookie, being able to, you know, talk to somebody like that is, is really cool. Jeff Bondi, Daily News. Hey, Emmanuel. Um, Ty Lu was just saying that before the game, you um, – you sat down and watched Kawhi Leonard shoot for like 15 minutes. What was what was that about? Why you know and what why did you do it and what did you get out of it? Um, I'm intrigued on you know just watching the best players and what they do, their habits. Uh, I ask a lot of questions. Uh, I'm just a really curious person, so just watching what he does. Um, wasn't really going to bother him or nothing or ask no questions right there, but just seeing how he carries himself, uh, how, how, what type of pro he is and, and just really that, um, I was just intrigued at seeing, you know, the, the best players at our game and, and what they do. Amanda Hajar, Knicks Digital. Hey, quick, um, Paul George post game commented on, on you as a player and said you, your float game is crazy said you're fearless. How surreal is that as a rookie hearing a veteran, especially a guy like Paul George, comment on that? Uh, it's crazy, honestly. Uh, another one of the best players in our game. So uh, for him to say that about me, it's, it's a hum humbling experience. I appreciate it. Uh, but I just want to continue to try to keep getting better to help try to help this team get more wins. So um, appreciate that and uh, best of luck to him. Bobby Childs. Emmanuel, um, you know, can you talk about that fourth quarter? Um, you know, they ran out to a good lead in the in the third quarter. Um, you cut it to two at some point, then again at five. What did you feel going on um, for them to pull away from you? What was missing from from you guys? Um, honestly, I feel like uh, I feel like we we did a, a good job, just not a great job, not good enough to beat a team like that. 
Uh, some teams you can get away with it, but not the Clippers. They're one of the best teams in our league. So uh, sometimes, you know, you got to give that extra effort or um, make that one more pass or whatever it might be. I feel like, you know, you just got to do a little bit extra against the, the better teams like that. Thank you, Emmanuel. Hi, everyone. We have Julius Randall. If you have a question, please raise your hand and I'll bring you into the room. First question comes from Mark Berman, New York Post. Hey Julius, um, you know, the, you guys played a pretty good game and still lose by double digits. I mean, how good are these Clippers? Is this the best squad you guys have seen so far? Uh, absolutely, for sure. hundred uh, percent, without a doubt. They're really a uh, really good team. Um, you can tell they're a championship caliber team, what we aspire to be. So uh, we put ourselves in a position, we gave ourselves uh, shots, but uh, at the end of the day, they're, I mean, they're a really good team. So, you know, hats off to them. They got Really good players there. Ian Bagley, SNY. This is like a, a random specific question, but I think it was like 2.30 to go in the first. RJ had the ball on the perimeter one-on-one -on -one with Zubats. And I think Tib said something to RJ. You said something to RJ. And then he gave it to you and you gave it back to him in a different spot. What do you remember about the, the, what the conversation was and, and what you guys were trying to do? Oh uh, yeah, I was just telling. I knew we had the mismatch, um, but you know, the the they know it too. So you know, the defense is loaded, and they're all eyes are on him. So uh, I mean, it's really just a term in the league. It's called boomerang, um, and you know, I just tell him hit me, uh, re space, so the defense can kind of you know relax, and, and all eyes are on him, and they hit him back, and he has kind of have a live dribble just to attack Zubac, uh, attack the big, and, I, and that's what he did. He did a good job. So uh, it's just just trust and patience and. Um, you know, it was a good play. Thank you, Julius. I appreciate it.